Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 9, Data Warehouse Part 3. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the methodology for data warehousing design, explain the dimensionality modeling. Designing a data warehouse database is highly complex. To begin a data warehouse project, we need answers for questions such as which user requirements are most important and which data should be considered first. Also, should the project be scaled down into something more manageable yet at the same time provide an infrastructure capable of ultimately delivering a full scalable enterprise-wide data warehouse? Questions such as this highlight some of the major issues in building data warehouses. There are two popular methodology that can be used to develop a data warehouse. In this section, we will discuss the differences between Kimball and Inman in data warehouse architecture approach. Both Kimball and Inman's architectures share a same common feature that each has a single integrated repository of Atomic Data. In Inman's architecture, it is called Enterprise Data Warehouse. And in Kimball's architecture, it is known as the Dimensional Data Warehouse. Both architectures have an enterprise focus that supports information analysis across the organization. This approach enables to address the business requirements not only within a subject area, but also across subject areas. However, there are some differences in the data warehouse architectures of both experts. Kimball uses the dimensional data model such as star schemas or snowflake to organize the data in dimensional data warehouse while Inman uses ER model in enterprise data warehouse. Inman only uses dimensional model for data mats only while Kimball uses it for all data. Inman uses data mats as physical separation from enterprise data warehouse and they are built for departmental users. While in Kimball's architecture, it is unnecessary to separate the data mats from the dimensional data warehouse. In dimensional data warehouse of Kimball, analytic systems can access data directly, while in Inman's architecture, analytic systems can only access data in enterprise data warehouse via data mats. Here are the most important criteria how to choose between Kimball versus Inman approach. If the business decision support requirements are tactical, you can use Kimball. If it's strategic, you can use Inman. For data integration, for Kimball, it is individual business requirement and for Inman, it is enterprise-wide integration. For structure of the data, if the data is key performance index, business performance measures or scorecards, we can use Kimball. But if data that meets multiple and varied information needs and non-metric data, you can use Inman. For persistence of data in source system, the source systems are quite stable for Kimball. However, for Inman, it is source system have high rate of change. For skill set, for Kimball, you need small team of generalists. But for Inman, you need bigger team of specialists. The time constraint is, for Kimball, urgent needs for the first data warehouse and for Inman, longer time is allowed to meet business needs. For cost to build, for Kimball, it is low, cost, uh, low startup cost, but for Inman, it is high startup cost. Let's take a look on dimensionality modeling. Dimensionality modeling is a logical design technique that aims to present the data in standard, intuitive form that allows for high performance access. It uses the concept of entity relationship modeling with some important restrictions. Every dimension model is composed of one table with a composite primary key called the fact table and a set of smaller table called dimension table. Fact table is a numeric table, while dimension table is a descriptive table. Dimensionality modeling looks like ERD, but it can be called as either star schema, snowflake schema, or constellation schema. Let's take a look on star schema. It is a data modeling representation of multidimensional database. Star schema diagram looks like star with one large central table is fact table while other is dimension tables. This is an example of star schema. If you take a look here, we have sales, time, product, location and customer. There is one to many relationship from each dimension table to fact table. Sales is called fact table because it has numeric sales quantity attribute while the other tables are dimension tables. If you take a look, 
all the primary key of the uh, dimension table is inside the fact table. That's why the fact table actually looks like the bridge table in our ER diagram. This is another example of star schema. If you take a look, sales is the fact table because it has the unit sold as the quantity. And product, period and store are called as dimension table. For snowflake schema, it has multiple levels of dimension tables related to one or more fact tables. The snowflake schema, instead of the star schema, for small dimension tables, they are not in 3 and F. This is an example of snowflake schema. You will have one fact table and the rest are dimension tables. However, take a look over here, you have dimension to dimension relationship. Based on the example, product dimension has relationship to brand dimension and customer dimension has relationship to country dimension. If you have dimension to dimension relationship, this is what we call as snowflake schema. Let's move on to constellation or galaxy schema. A constellation schema contains multiple facts table in the center related to the dimension table. By right, you will have more than one fact tables in the schema. Based on the example, the fact tables are delivery and sales. In sales because you have the amount. While in the delivery also, you have the amount. It is a numeric value. So that's why delivery and sales are the fact table. And fact tables might share some dimension tables. If you take a look here, the time and product here are the dimension tables that are shared between delivery and sales. Let's take a look on the case study on how to draw a star schema and snowflake schema. Based on the data, you are given year, region, agent, product and quantity data. The question is, draw a star schema, assume attributes on your own. The second question is, convert the star into snowflake schema, assume the attributes on your own. Let's take a look. So let's take a look on how to draw the star schema first based on the first question. As I said, the first thing that you need to know is please find the please find the fact table. Okay, please find the fact table first. Fact table is something numeric. So if you take a look based on our data that we have, year, region, agent, product, and quantity, which one is numeric? Quantity. So of course you can make this one as quantity as your fact table why year looks like it is quantity isn't it 2009 2009 but remember 2009 is yy yy it is a date so date is not numeric column okay so after you find the fact table find the um, dimension table okay find the dimension table so the dimension that we have here is the year region agent product okay okay that's all okay we have four so means the first one that you need to put in the middle is the fact table so now this is quantity so maybe we put the fact table as sales so inside sales what do we have we have quantity okay so sales we have quantity and sales has relationship with the dimension so what is the first dimension the first one that we have is the year the year over here so maybe you have the the year id year month okay and so forth so you can assume the attribute on your own so maybe you have here one to many relationship Okay, because the fact table will always have the many sides. Okay, so what's the PK of year? You have here is the year ID. Okay, then the second one that we have is the region. Okay, region. So inside region, what can we have? Maybe we have the region ID, region name. Okay, two or three is enough. If it's given to you, then of course you need to put all the attributes. But if they ask you to assume, two or three attributes are enough. Okay, so one region, many 
still so inside here we have the region id so besides that what do we have we have another one is agent okay agent so if you take a look over here agent you have the agent id agent name you have the agent email for example okay so what's the relationship one agent many sales okay so what is the pk of agent agent id okay and the last one we have the last dimension that we have is product okay product so what is inside product inside product we have the product id maybe product name okay so one product many sales so inside here we have product id okay so if you take a look here this is our this is our star schema okay so this is how we get our star schema based on the data given based on the second question they ask you to extend the star schema into snowflake okay snowflake schema what is it by snowflake schema you have dimension to dimension relationship so based on the star schema that we have maybe i want to add another dimension which is what we call as country okay this is another dimension which is what we call as country so inside country what do we have country id maybe you have the country name okay so one region will have many countries okay so country is something descriptive also remember dimension is something descriptive okay something descriptive okay the region agent product and year are something descriptive same goes with country so this is we have dimension to another dimension okay so one to many so inside here we have the region id so when you have dimension to dimension this is what we call as snowflake schema okay so the whole thing now has become snowflake schema because we have dimension to dimension relationship so that's all for now see you again in the next part thank you